Hey everybody, it is Hutch again, and we are going to be teaching you, I'm sure it's got other names, but um, in the military we just called it the water machine. And this is for a situation where you've already got fire, which we normally recommend make a fire anyway, so you can keep your water going, then build your shelter, everything like that. Um, but maybe the snow won't compact enough to make a snowball, so you can't do like the finished marshmallow, which is another wonderful technique. In this situation, we're gonna create something that we can just shovel snow in, and it'll constantly, while our fire's going, whether we're sleeping in a super shelter or a lean-to, we've got the fire anyway, right? Why not have it making water for us all night or while we're doing other things, so we can just come up and take a drink? I recommend maybe even making two of these or conditioning your dog in the military. A lot of you guys know I was canine in the Marine Corps. Um, we used to set one up for the dogs so they could constantly, they'll eat snow, but they could walk up. We would feed them under it and then they just knew to walk over there and take a drink every now and again. So let's take a look at uh, how we're going to set up the water machine. Right, the first thing we need for the water machine is to build a tripod. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm doing a quick tripod. I wanna make sure the bottom of my tripod is lined up. I couldn't care less about the top. And I tie a loop, any kind of loop, in my cordage. And I leave several inches here so no matter what type of lashing that I'm doing, I can end it really easily, especially if I'm forgetting things or my hands are shaking, with just any old knot, square knot, anything, like tying my shoes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that loop about a hand span or two. You don't want it falling off. I just put that around. Now, if you're going after a merit badge, you still have to use the proper lashing and everything. But remember, a lot of times we teach things uh, in a certain order, certain way every time, just so we don't leave them out. So that really is all you need to start most lashings. And rather than zigzagging through these, I'm just gonna do a really quick one. I'm gonna suspend the um, sticks just by holding them in my legs up off the ground to make it easier and I am just gonna tightly go around Three or four times this isn't gonna be load bearing so I'm not overly concerned Just dressing it a little bit. I just really want it to hold together and then I'm going to go ahead and Tighten this all up getting all my fraps and wraps working together and if you have trouble getting in there, I see a lot of people fight with this. A nifty trick is first off, get it suspended either on a log or your legs, and then just make a loop, push the loop through, and then you'll grab that down on the bottom. That way you don't have to pull these like at angles and do all kinds of weird stuff to get them through. And then this, this is where we really want to be pulling tight. And that tightens that all up. A little branch there. Should have done the loop. Should have done the loop. All right, do that again, stick the loop through. Much easier, I think I'll learn from my mistake this time and loop up, I didn't realize that branch was there. Now normally you want your fraps and wraps to be the same number, but for this, because it's not load bearing, I just want it to be tight enough to be a tripod. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I'm gonna come on over here now and do the same thing. See how I've got that tail still hanging out from before? So at the end of this, like I said, if I'm having dexterity issues or if I only want to take my gloves off for a second, I can just end it with any old knot, preferably something that's not going to cause me to cut my cordage. Now, if I was using my shoestrings here, I could use less cordage. It's just I have the cordage. I don't want to cut it. Um, or I could also use something like a jam knot or an arbor knot. So I am just going to tie a regular old square knot. I'm just going to go left over right. Right over left. Or I could have tied just like I tie my shoes, whatever. I do have something hanging down here if I wanted to spend it like a pot or something later. But that's really not important for today. And I'm actually going to need it for the second part of the water machine. <clears throat> With tripods, especially if you do get into load bearing, which this isn't, there is a right way. Sometimes you just kind of see people uh, fight with them until they get up, but you want to kick the middle leg back towards you and cross the other two legs. Not so important with what we're doing, but when you get into load bearing, that's going to give you 
the stiffest, most secure structure if you're building a shelter or something. All right, next, we've got to build a platform to shovel the snow into. You can use a t-shirt, you can weave a grass mat if you need to, um, or you can use a handkerchief. And you can use any old knots you want. You could tie overhand knots around it if your um, poles are small enough. Or you could cut a little tail if you don't mind damaging it and then tie around. Or you can add some pieces of cordage just doing a sheet band and then tie around it like that. We'll go ahead and show you a few of those. So if you don't mind damaging what you have, you can actually just make two tails. Now you can tie these tails around. Be careful with certain materials, the weight of the snow might be enough to rip it. Another option, especially if cordage is limited, is you could pull one of your seven strands out of paracord and tie it to one of the corners and then secure it there. If you are gonna do this, I recommend putting a little pebble or something in there so that it doesn't slide through whatever you tie. Um, in this case, we're going to use whatever this is, a little piece of, just a little piece of wood. I might change that for something smaller in a minute, but I'm just gonna put that through there. Now, I like to use a clove hitch, but really, you know what? Let's not even do that for now so you don't have to learn another knot. Just wrap it around a bunch of times, putting something in there keeps it from pulling out under weight, and I can just tie these two tails around. Last but not least, if you've got what you need to do it, you can tie another knot, a very good knot to know out here called a sheet bend. It allows you to join ropes together. Always start with the larger piece of rope, bend it in half, take the smaller piece of rope up through the hole, around the back, and back under itself. Now I'm going to extend my tail. You normally wouldn't want to do that because you're joining cordage. You don't want to waste it. But in this case, I want to be able to tie these two pieces together like shoelaces around a piece of wood. Just a little old knot. Next, let's tie this one up here. Once again, just a little old knot. Just like tying your shoes. Now when you attach your last piece, it's really important that you make sure to leave a little dip for the snow, okay? And here, because of the way it lined up, I'm just gonna tie it to what's there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get a container underneath this. And you might be asking yourself, well, if I've got a metal container, why do I need this method? Remember, the water machine is continuously making water for you so that you don't have to get into the one or two, maybe three, four, five liters that you're carrying into the back country. Save that, use it, drink it when you need to. Using snow to make water is a cumbersome process. It is time consuming. Um, this way you wake up in the morning with water. Um, or if you don't have something metal, you can put a t-shirt underneath it and it will actually drip, drip, drip and you can suck the water out of the t-shirt if you absolutely had to. Um, a lot of different things you can do to collect the water. But remember, it's not so much that you don't have something you could melt water in. It's about you want to spend your time fishing, tracking, looking for bobcats and trees. You don't want to spend all your time there managing snow water so you have something to drink. Now we just have to collect some snow. The other nice thing about this method is we're not going to have to worry about burning through a tin if we overpack it. We can put as much snow as we want in there. Now initially there's a little bit of work here, you know, building stuff, getting it set up, but after that it works for you. But what you want to do at this point in time, get your tripod close to your fire if you're doing a fire like this. If you're sleeping in a super shelter, you've got a long fire, just put a tripod on either end of your bed there, but between you and the fire, and you just wait. Once you get that first drip, line up the pan, and from then on out, water will pretty much follow the same path unless you change something drastically. 
So remember, the whole point of the water machine is that you might, in the military, be doing tactical things for fun and recreation. You're out looking around for stuff. See this steam? That's a good sign. See, I can already see moisture here in the bandana. I don't know if it's dark enough for you to see, right? We don't want to just be sitting around watching this, waiting for it to go. We're looking for this moment, and we start seeing steam and stuff like uh, this, this water. Now it's just a matter of that water collecting. Ooh, and that's hot. Like that water is, that's, that water is hot to the touch. It's steaming. So pretty soon we'll get a drip. And once we get a drip, we just add snow to it whenever we think about it. When you head out in the woods, you just bought all your survival gear from whoever. Make sure you do things like wash your bandanas. See how this water, we bought this brand new uh, bandana just to make the video. See how it's purple? That's a stain, which could make you sick. So when you get your gear, make sure to wash it once. Use it once in the backyard, make sure it works. I hope you like the water machine. Uh, if you do camp with a dog, start getting them used to the things you do, sleeping in shelters, drinking water, because the first few times, it's gonna be new to them. They're, they're not gonna understand that that's their water. Um, let them know one's for them, one's for you. As far as doing this stuff, uh, as you can see, we've got a nice little supply of water. I can go about my business. I'm not using the water that I carried with me. And anytime I walk by and I see some water's collected, I can pick it up, it's not too hot to drink. And I just put it back down, drop some more snow in, and I forget about it until I see it again. Keeps me on a good hydration schedule out here in the cold. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I love sharing this stuff with you. I hope to run into you sometime out here on the adventure trail. And whether you're trying this out here with us or in your own backyard, remember, there's no such thing as a small adventure. Have fun out there.